guys what is up welcome back to the channel it is yours truly crystal leandra here with the ghost girl diaries podcast i know there wasn't any intro music i'm having some weird technical issues on my side i can't really see if anyone's in or not so i um, thought i would just pop in i know usually we wait a little bit longer but i'll pop the uh, other intro song in when i I'll, I'll just edit it this time how is everybody it's saturday night normally we don't do streams on saturday night but Yesterday, I actually had some construction going on in my house, um, and if anyone out there has their own house, they know how unfun construction work is. Basically, about uh, two to three weeks ago, three or four weeks ago, actually, I had a uh, pipe burst in one of my bathrooms, and it, it actually was supposed to be like a really small job. And when they got in there, it ended up being like a bigger deal, so they had to end up knocking a wall out in my bathroom. And contractors are so lazy man like I'm sorry how you know if you're a contractor out there it's not anything against you personally just um <laughs> it was just I've been waiting for this guy for like two or three weeks to come fix my my wall and I'm like can you just come fix my wall please like I have no wall in my bathroom and uh he got, he got half of it done yesterday 
and did not finish the other half. Said he was going to come today to fix it. <laughs> he didn't show up again today. Surprise, surprise. So, um, yeah, that's still ongoing. I'm going to go ahead and just bring in Kat, though. Hey, Miss Cat. How is Miss Cat this evening? Hello. I'm doing really well. How are you? How's the East Coast? It's cold still. Uh, flipping cold. Yeah, I think it's like 12. Yeah, it's like 12 right now. <laughs> oh, my gosh. I, bet I know. Freezing. I keep it toasty in the apartment, you know. I bet. <laughs> Yeah. I don't know what I'd do if being in Vegas. I'd be like, I'm frozen. I can't live. Yeah. I swear. Because I become a popsicle. I would not be able to go back to Colorado. I swear it. Like, I would love to have a winter home there, but when I'm done with the cold, just leave. I'm done. You know? <laughs> Vegas cold, though, is cold. It is. It's like, a, it's genuine. Like, I was that person that was like, mm, it's a, I don't know. It's a different kind of cold. It is. It's valley cold. Y'all are not, like right not to like cold. complain because people in Texas have it like way way worse right now, but yeah, yeah, yeah which my heart goes out to everybody in Texas. Like I can't even imagine. Like it, it makes me sick. The animals that have been dying too, and the people living in their cars, and it's just horrifying. But um, but yeah, the cold in Vegas is it's a different cold. It's a it's a desert cold, and like. I remember Kat came out here one winter and she's like, oh, I don't need, you know, a coat. And I was like, okay, well, I think you do, you know, like, she's like, no, it's like 60 degrees, but at night it can drop to like 20 and in the desert cold, like that freezing stuff comes off the sand and it is not funny. It is not funny. So, um, yeah, we have kind of a cool stream today. Originally we were just going to do black eyed kids and we're still going to do that chat later on. But something else kind of came up over the last couple of days, and uh, I know some of you guys that have, or or maybe you, you missed it on my Instagram story, I had kind of like a moment like two nights ago where I was like crying on my Instagram story, and I just thought, you know what, it's good to like show that vulnerable side of you and like things you go through tough times. I mean, obviously, I think in my book, I've showed a lot of vulnerability as well, which P.S., I have it right here. <gasps> I have my the own book. book. Oh, Cat oh. just finished it. It's so good, you guys. It's <sighs> so good. It just sucks you right in. I mean, and there's it's like a, watching a reality show. There, oh, thanks. <laughs> Jeez, it's pretty bad when that's like your real life stories. You're just like, wow. No, I. There's a couple of like you know punctuation things I screwed up in here. But Cat was like, Crystal, you wrote a book. Let it go to Jesus let it it wasn't that noticeable I know but you know I'm a perfectionist so I like raked myself over the coals but it was just stuff like a couple of words were out of place there wasn't really any misspellings it was mainly a couple words out of place and like instead of a comma it should have been a semicolon you know what I'm Kate, Kat's like let the semicolon go crystal <laughs> I'm just like you wrote this book in two months <laughs> Like, oh my it's God. Like, it's so great. Yeah, so I can't wait. Kat made a lot of notes in her book, and so we're going to have a stream like about that later on, um, going over the book, so that'll be kind of cool. There is some it's paranormal kinda... stuff in there, too, So because everybody was asking me about that. But going back to... Um, I have talked about what it's like being a female in paranormal and film before, but I feel like I've never really gone into like an in-depth discussion. And there's a couple of reasons I um, I haven't done that till now. And one of the main ones is that I have Kat here who has now been going through it with me. And she also understands what it's, what it's like. And uh, I did this by myself for a long time. You know, I was just ghost girl by myself. And Kat's now been on the journey with me for what? Like we're on three years now, right? Yeah, it'll be three years in July. That's crazy. Oh, my God. It flew. It so flew. Exciting. So crazy. Wow, you've grown. You've changed so much just since, like, when I first met you. You're just like, I just want to learn everything. I know. I just love soaking things in like a sponge. So well, I'm always like, let me do all the tasks. Oh do them all. I mean, there's too many. You know, we need to split them it's up a true. little. It's true. But she's done yeah. awesome. You've done awesome on the journey with me. And... I don't know if Kat was even really expecting some of the things that we, um, we've ran into, you know, with hiccups. And so I don't, I, I think this is a really good opportunity to not only get my viewpoint of things I've been through since like, um, 2011 being in like some major studio contracts, but also getting Kat's feedback of like sort of being my sidekick. She hasn't been in major, um, contracts, but she's seen 
all the things I've been doing. She's helped me with negotiations on the side. Um, and it's a complicated mixed bag. And, and another reason I wanted to bring this up was I have a lot of people recently that have been asking me on social media, like, why isn't the stream or not the stream? Why isn't Ghost Girl Diary signed yet? And I wish it was just that easy, you know, and then of course you hit things like a pandemic happens and just weird things that life throws at you. So I have hit sort of the same wall over and over again with um, with paranormal problems with production and producers and production companies. And I just thought this would be a really good time to kind of chat about that. So as you guys know, 2000. 19 is when we decided to shoot the pilot we shot it in february of 2019 actually it was about end of january into february and um it was um a very like skeleton crew because that was really all i could afford the the pilot itself cost me out of pocket about a hundred thousand dollars so i know like a lot of people could go one way or the other either whoa that's a lot of money or wow, that's not very much money. And, and on the film side of things, that's about average for a documentary. Um, and it, yes, it is a lot of money. And that's why we haven't shot another one because um, that's gonna take some time to sort of prepare for another round of it. But essentially, um, even prior to the pilot happening, I've, I've shared on social media and YouTube, I think I've done a couple of videos about having um, production contracts. I have been in more than I can count. Like I think the last time I was on YouTube and announced it, I had been in like seven or eight different contracts with different production companies and different networks. And some of them fell through. Some of them I backed out of for different reasons. And um, this time, you know, when I did the pilot, I was going in at, not just like as a cast member being signed or not, not just as a producer being signed, but as like the executive producer slash director of um, how I'm wanting to create like this visual piece like filmography wise and um, it was interesting because we ended up submitting the pilot to Sundance we ended up getting um, in the finals for Sundance so essentially they break it down with I think there's thousands of people that submit to Sundance and they break it down into sections. So they'll say like, okay, you've you've entered into like the final 500 pick, then you've ent entered into the final 200 pick. And like, they sort of like narrow it down that way. So we were in the final, the actual like last cut. And then we were cut um, during the last cut, which we ended up finding out later. The reason we were cut was because um, budget wise with film festivals, they sort of look at how much um, documentaries or films cost and they, they sort of have a max on how much they can allot in because essentially you're going to be signing these documentaries and films to production companies and producers and they're going to be reimbursing you for the cost of what your film was. So we ended up finding out that we had a really major competitor that we didn't know about and uh, the major competitor was Taylor Swift and... I can definitely not compete with Taylor Swift's money, for sure, like 100%. Like, I don't know who can, honestly. There's not a lot of people that could compete with Taylor Swift's money. So, you know, she had a lot of money to um, great cameras, great camera techs, obviously, and Netflix ended up picking up um, the documentary. And we were cut, which is okay. It just sort of means, like, that's not our door. It's not our time. And um, from there, I ended up going, I did submit the, um, pilot to several other film festivals that we did enter in. Um, we did get chosen for a lot of those. Um, we did get a lot of people that um, were interested in signing the series. And I did start negotiating with several, several companies and production companies um, to sign Ghost Girl Diaries, the series. And it always sort of ends up the same. And this is the part where I haven't really discussed publicly, and um, which is where I'm excited for Kat to sort of step in because how long does one negotiation, Kat? How, how long does one negotiation take or can it take? A long time. I, I would say even months. Literally. It can take months. Yeah. 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 And Kat was and it, in there. And it now mm -hmm. is worse because of the pandemic mm -hmm. so it times that by like 10 yeah you have <laughs> Literally. the production companies executive producers people that are willing to sign you 
who are on a very limited budget because of the pandemic. They have, you know, if you're talking about a millionaire, no matter what side of the spectrum, a millionaire is somebody that does not rely on one source of income. They have several sources of income. And no matter what, one or two sources of their income has been affected by the pandemic in some way. And even though they still have a lot of money, they still own properties, equity, stocks, they're still a millionaire, they still get concerned when one or two of their streams of income is being affected in a negative balance sort of way, and it makes them hesitate from signing another series. It makes them hesitate from handing over what our budget was looking at would be like $1 million for the first season, which actually is not a lot, by the way. If, if, you, multiply, if, you, if you divide $1 million into 12 episodes, that's about $112,000 per episode, which is pretty typical for a documentary series. Um, you have to pay your camera techs. You have to have travel money, food money, uh, hotel stay money gas money i mean all that stuff adds up that doesn't include equipment that you need things like that um and so what happens is yes cat's right you have already a complicated process which is negotiations can take place over the course of months literally i would say a minimum of three to four months usually and then um unless you have somebody that really is just ready to go and sign you and mm. then you have the pandemic where these people are hurting financially and now they're really scared of who they're going to sign because you're kind of like a bar a bargaining chick but like okay if i give you a million dollars will i really get that return investment and it's very scary for them now if it succeeds of course they're going to get a lot of money where where your money comes from the most when like let's say that the series got signed to travel channel the money comes from the commercials like, it's funny because I remember a few years ago there was a Ghost Adventures episode and people were pissed because there was like five or six commercials abnormally long in between each commercial break. And it's because they pay for the filming. Like, they pay everybody, the cast, the crew. Like, Johnson & Johnson, that toilet paper commercial you just saw, they just spent like $4.5 million to have it air during Ghost Adventures primetime. So, um, you know, it, they can get a return investment in the end, yes, but there's still, like, no guarantee, especially during a pandemic, and it's scary. So, <clears throat> sort of fast forward from there, um, I, I was in another, uh, you know, I w I've been in several negotiations from 2020 up until uh, February, February of 2021, and this last negotiation just sort of ended, and this is how it goes every single time. Every single time. <coughs> I have a pilot. I'm submitting. Now, having not only the pilot, but I also have a successful YouTube channel with hundreds of videos, thousands of hours worth of content, hundreds of thousands of views, or hundreds of thousands of fans, millions of views. Um, I'm, I'm handing a platter to these production companies of something that's already developed. So... Therefore, it should be an easy sign. It should be an easy sign. They should see me coming and say, she has a pilot, it looks good. She had audio, she had drone footage, she had everything she needed. She had paranormal evidence. <clears throat> she has this, that. She has a fan base already established. But what ends up happening is I negotiate sort of um, an example would be I want to hold on to 51% and I negotiate the other 49%. And the reason I do that is because I'm still holding on to a majority within my own pocket. I'm still holding on to a majority of control as the executive producer and director. Okay. And then what ends up happening is they're like, yes, yes, this is great. This is it. Yes, this is what we were negotiating. Yep, okay, you're going to be holding the director title. You're going to be holding executive producer title. Um, you have a plan. Like, I literally have a budget down to the dollar. I have lists and lists of haunted locations. Like, I'm ready to go at the drop of a pen. I have most of the crew. I need to hire some more people, but in order to do that, I need money. And then at the last minute, right as I'm getting ready to sign the dotted line for an actual contract for the series, they come back at me and they say, 
you know, we've been thinking about this for a few weeks. And what we've decided is in order for us to sign you, you need to relinquish the 51% so that we are fully in control. And I have a problem with that. And the reason I have a problem with that is I'm the one that has built up Ghost Girl Diaries on YouTube all of these years. No one else did. I'm the one that's created the fan base. I'm the one that's done all of the editing. I'm the one that's done all of the videos by myself. I have an established EP position that should not be taken from me. Control should not be taken from me. Now, as far as negotiating and getting ideas cinematic-wise or like collaborating with producers or EPs on what they want to see, of course I'm going to be open-minded and work with them. But the problem is, is this happened before. When I was signed with Pilgrim Studios, who is the ones that did uh, Ghost Hunters, Ghost Hunters Academy, okay, they, they were kind of creating this show, this series around me, and then it changed at the last minute because at the time I was only signed on for cast. And when that series morphed, it turned into what we all know now as Killer Contact. It plummeted. It had, what, six, six episodes, nine episodes, and it was so bad it didn't get re-signed. Now, if someone was to come in, take control and power over Ghost Girl Diaries, they signed me for one season, and it came out looking like shit, and it was not up to my expectations as a producer, as a director, as a paranormal investigator, as an executive producer for all the work that I've put in all of these years, and we released that first season, and it's total shit, and it plummets, and I don't get re-signed, my career is over. Everything I've worked for on YouTube since 2013 when I created the channel will go to shit. And that is something I'm not willing to risk. And so then I end up being the one saying I will not relinquish more than that percentage. And, and by the way, they never give me a real reason why they want full control. And I've also had, you know, tests in the past where I've gotten in... Um, production contracts with companies and producers and, and uh, networks. And they end up leaving me in contract for years, not touching the series. It never gets signed. It never does anything. We never shoot anything. And then I'm stuck in contract and I have to get a lawyer and get out of the contract. So when I get that intuitional like gut feeling, I have to back out. I have to back out. But, you know, with that being said, and I've told Kat this numerous times, and I'm going to let Kat tangent for a minute because I know she has a lot to say. Mm -hmm. I know for a absolute fact that if I was a man, I would have been signed already. These producers and old Hollywood money production companies, even networks, are all backed by old white men and they find me extremely problematic for being a female, thinking I can come in. They don't believe women have brains. They don't think that girls can um, budget correctly with a series. They don't think that I'm knowledgeable with film, even though I've just provided them with a pilot that's amazing and blew them out of the water. Um, it's just, uh, it's a gender issue. And it sucks because... We're in an era where we've heard, you know, oh, the film industry's changing. Like, we're going to make it more about women. Yes, they're trying, but it's not happening fast enough. And, you know, not only am I a female wanting to be an executive producer or director, but it's of a paranormal genre. I'm in a genre where that doesn't even exist. Like, you have Amy Bruni, who's an EP. It's not really the same thing because she started out with Ghost Hunters. It's not the same thing. I'm a fresh newbie coming out on my own. And it's like, we don't know if we trust you. You're a girl. That's really what it comes down to. I mean, and it's obvious because if you look at the paranormal genre itself, you have like, what, one female to every 10 investigators that are on television? That's like a 10 percentile. So, Kat, I'm going to let you take over from, from everything. I mean, you can say whatever you, you want. Yeah, I think that it's just a very frustrating to have this continuously happen on you know crystal's path and for any woman for that matter um i think that 
especially in Crystal's position where she already has an established fan base, like she said before, a very successful platform on YouTube, on Twitch, the podcast now, um, you know, fan bases and things like that. She not only has that, but she has Travel Channel. Mm -hmm. She has, you know, producer credits being with Pilgrim, you know, working on other paranormal, you know, major sets. And it it's unfortunate because especially from the feminism side of things, just want equality we mm -hmm. just want equality you know what i mean like equal recognition mm -hmm. is i guess a great way to put it and we went above and beyond crystal went above and beyond to give you know these networks the information that they needed um even more information than what they asked for mm -hmm. and because she's a woman it's not going to be enough and, and i don't know what that means i'm not too sure if they for some reason feel like it's demasculating when there's a woman that's successful and confident in like what she's pitching and doing and has the credentials to do that um but it is extremely frustrating because it is hard you know and then that's why crystal got emotional a couple of days ago was this has been a long journey of the same patterns happening and that is so frustrating for, for all of the hard work that, you know, she does and she puts into GGD with social media and with content preparation and, you know, making sure that you guys are also, you know, welcome and, and being told how much of a support you are. And, you know, it's a lot like there's a lot of undertaking that that she does. And I don't know. I don't know. I, I, I don't know what the problem is here uh, other than the fact that she's she's too overqualified, to be totally honest. Um, it's sad and it's frustrating um, because we, it just makes you feel like they want you to give up. Well, and something you know I've I mean? heard over and over again that I, and this is, I think, one of the first times I've ever said this, like, really, really publicly, but something that I hear from producers, production companies, even networks over and over again is, you know, Zach is the image of paranormal. He is a white guy with tattoos, muscles, perfect hair, too tight of shirts, and he looks like he could fight a demon. Like, literally, like, that's the image that they, they would like the tough guys because you're going after the demons. And then they, I have literally, guys, like, verbatim, verbatim, this is what I'm going to tell you. And I've heard it from multiple producers, multiple networks, multiple... Um, production companies and they always say this to me to my face crystal i get what you're trying to do the problem is, is that you do your makeup and you have the face of a porn star and you're not going to be taken seriously as a as a paranormal investigator so you just need to give it up and then i've also been told that maybe if you start in only fans or maybe if you go into porn first then we could move you over to paranormal but you'd have to get some sort of like sexually based like men like awing after you in order to become something. And you know what my response is? You don't see guys slinging their wahoos around to try to get where they're at. Like Zach didn't get signed by slinging his D everywhere out publicly. Why do I have to do that? No. You know, and it's and, and on by the way, that's not who I am. That's not who I am. And it's offensive yeah. when someone tells you you look like a porn star. Like, not no offense to porn stars and people on OnlyFans. Do you, boo? You're an entrepreneur girl. You get it. But that is not who I am. I'm not a porn star. I'm not going into porn. I'm not going into OnlyFans. I'm not here, like, trying to sell my body for money. That's not me. I'm here as a, you know, filmmaker. I want to be taken at, serious as a filmmaker. And I want to be a producer and I want to be a paranormal investigator. I don't want to be a porn star. That's not the point of this. And yeah. I mean, that that goes all the way back, guys, to 2011 when I was on um, Paranormal Challenge and I, I made friends with Dave Schrader. Him and I don't speak anymore. Um, there's a lot of personal problems that happened with that relationship, friendship. But what Dave Schrader told me was, you'll never be who you want to be, Crystal. You will never make it because of the way you look. They either want the girl next door like Chris Williams. They don't want a girl that's empowered with makeup, looking like a porn star, walking in trying to be a paranormal investigator. So I've heard that since practically day one. So in other words, I think I just caught like a lucky break, 
getting on paranormal challenge and even back then I haven't even taken my like I was asked to tone down my physical appearance a little bit more when I was on set um and so it's just been a um something I've been fighting the, you know for it's a long ridiculous. time it is it is and like that's why when I brought in you know even Chanel you know when Chanel was with us like I wanted to bring in powerful females Elfie joined us from paranormal state that's badass she, you know, I wanted to bring in powerful women. Kat's a badass. We don't, why do you have to, like, and I know we're in an area of the Kardashians. I understand that Kim Kardashian made her family what it is because she sold a sex tape. And a lot of people in Generation Millennial and Generation Z are now t taking that same route with OnlyFans. Why do I have to be one of them? I don't want to be one of them. It's not that I have a problem showing my body. It's just that's not who I am. And I shouldn't it's, have to negotiate it. No, and it shouldn't even be a topic of conversation. Like, that, if that's their only excuse, uh, that's a pretty shitty one, in my opinion. It is. To be blunt. You know, it's wrong. I think that's unprofessional for all the, the success and, and money that they have. And, I, you know, it's hard, guys, because it's, it's a constant battle for GGD and for Crystal. But the work never stops. And to break these barriers in the film industry and especially in paranormal, it takes a hard road like this. It takes a hard road like this. And it's, it is going to happen. Guaranteed, it will happen, you guys. This is going to happen someday. The series will be signed. And, you know, but it's just hard. Like, when these when these things happen or you get kind of slapped in the face with that curveball of, wow, they're making it sound really good. And then all of a sudden they say, no, I, I need more control. And it's like, why? I just literally gave you everything on a golden platter. Well, and Zach even presented his stuff before he had a fan base. I mean, he did the documentary back in the day. So, like, I'm presenting something that people don't even have, which is I already have a fan base. I already have something established. It's a big thing. It's millions of views I got by myself. If I can get millions of views by myself on a YouTube channel, imagine what I can create if I actually had my own series. And by the way, I never, I have always wanted to go to streaming. I've always wanted to be on the streaming side, whether it's Netflix, I get worried because they always cancel their, um, their episodic television series after like four seasons because they can't afford yeah. it. So I, I do get concerned with going to Netflix, but now that like uh, Discovery Plus is on, that is where I feel like I need to be is under the Discovery umbrella on Discovery Plus, not Travel Channel, not on cable. I want to be on Discovery Plus. But, you know, it, it, with that, you also look at other girls in Paranormal to use as examples. And, and you can tell they've gone through the same thing. Elfie literally was like, didn't do anything after Paranormal State because it's just so hard. You know, then you have, um, it's hard. It's hard being yeah. a girl in Paranormal. Well, it's hard. And, and you know, it's, I keep getting, like, triggered and then, like, I get caught in my <laughs> headphones. I'm triggered. And I'm like, Harry. Um, <laughs> but, you know, even outside of YouTube, you guys... Like, yes, like, you know Crystal from YouTube and, and from, you know, Travel Channel, what, whatever. But she has, like, legit film credentials. Like, she went to film school. She's been on major sets. She knows people in the industry. Like, this this is even bigger than just, like, the YouTube thing, you know, which is why it's shocking why they still will not allow her to do her thing. But then you go see, look at Chris Williams, who was on Ghost Hunters. Mm -hmm. She quit Ghost Hunters because she had such big problems with the producers and production company trying to sexualize her. She never really said that publicly, but I was with Pilgrim and heard things and knew what was going on behind the scenes. She quit and said she never wanted to be a part of any paranormal show ever again. Now, she could have changed her mind by now. But, like, that's how one girl was treated. And Chris Williams is probably the prettiest girl in paranormal, like, you know, being a girly girl. And, like, she's like, no, I'm done with this. Then you have Katrina, who was with Nick Groff on all of his different shows, or Paranormal Lockdown. She's been thrown around with Jack Osborne. She's been on so many different shows. And the reason is, is because she knows she has to take whatever opportunity gets thrown at her because she's a woman. And then it makes her look not so good because now she's been thrown around to eight different paranormal series. And she's like, all she wants to do is be successful in one, I'm sure. And then this one fails, and then she goes to this one, and then Jack Osborne has another series, and she's all over the place. 
And it sucks. I feel bad for her. It's not her fault. It's, you know, it is that old saying of don't drink from every cup or you'll get poisoned. That's why I don't just sign to every contract that comes my way because they're 99% of them are not going to be for me. They're not going to be what I need and they're not going to be the longevity and success of Ghost Girl Diaries and what it needs to be able to grow and flourish. And Katrina is a perfect example. She was with, you know, um, Jack and then she was with Nick and now what's she doing nothing so she's going to be sitting around waiting for Travel Channel to call her to just cast her again she won't be a producer she'll be cast again and she'll keep signing whatever she can because that's the only opportunity that she has as a female in this industry not everyone's been able to be as picky and choosy as I've been this whole time because I already have a backup as of the YouTube channel thank God but, you know, now going back to the other night when I got really emotional on Instagram, I just want to talk about that really quick because I want to make it kind of clear. So I got emotional on Instagram. I showed a video. I was watching one of the Ghost Adventures new episode, the newest episode. What is it called, Kat? Um, the uh, Brujeria yes. episode. I think yeah. so. And he basically all of a sudden pans over to this female camera tech and he goes, she's been working for us for a really long time. We decided to bring her on like permanent full time with us. And my jaw hit the floor. I thought I was going to throw up everywhere, but not for the reasons you may think. You might think I got upset because he hired her and not me. That's not the reason. First of all, she hasn't been working with them for a while. She's only been with them since 2020 because we, we looked her up on IMDb Pro. Okay. Mm -hmm. But... The reason I got sick is because he's behind. He, how many seasons are they in? 26 seasons? This is the first female they've hired for their crew? I'm not talking about Ashley Wosley, their photographer. A actual female crew member. It took them 26 seasons to bring on a female? Why? Why? Why did it take that long? Because yep. now suddenly we're in like a feminist movement. And honestly, when I first started my paranormal channel I didn't even know it was going to turn into this I didn't know I was going to be facing so many things as a girl my attitude in the beginning was like I'm a girl so what I, I can do it why can't I do it why can't I do what guys can do so what and then I just realized I was going to hit barrier after barrier after barrier and it's crazy because I was not expecting that but that's okay it gave me another reason another drive another purpose you know like you think of your your nephew, your nieces and your, your granddaughters and your daughters, you want them to be able to succeed for the same reasons. They want to grow up and be a paranormal investigator. Like, don't let anything stop them. Like, nothing should be stopping them from doing what they love. So I realized my journey on this path was more than just a filmmaker. It was more than just um, a paranormal investigator. It was to help pave the path and change things for future generations of girls out there. And so when I got emotional the other day, I, I was upset for another reason too. Like, you know, Zach, it's not, it's not an uncommon thing that Zach has taken some of my ideas. Okay, everybody knows that. He, he got my booze and reviews idea and then he turned it into, what was it called? Um, uh, Ghost Adventure oh Screaming gosh. Room. Screaming Room. Screaming Room. Screaming yeah, room. he's taken yeah. some of my ideas, like whatever. You know, we were friends in real life. We have not spoken a year. You know, and he. I've also talked um, it publicly regarding him um, saying, like, he should have hired female camera tech or something a long time ago. I'm glad it, he finally did. I don't know why it took this long, but I'm glad. But when I was crying on Instagram is I was literally mourning the genre of paranormal for women. I was literally mourning the fact that it has to be this hard. I was mourning that it takes 26 seasons for a girl to be a part of a major TV paranormal show. It should not take that long. It shouldn't. And, and on top of that, where are all the other ones now? Like, where are the doors opening for all the other ones? Like, it, it's just, it makes me sick. Like, and I know Chelsea's a part of Dakota show. It's not the same thing. Dakota worked with Zach. He brought in his sister. It's just different. That's it, that's one of those situations. It's not what you know. It's who you know. Um, but then on the flip side, you know, a lot of people. This is something I haven't talked about either. A lot of people, fans per se, were were pushing me and pushing me to submit my pilot to Zach. I did. I submitted it to him as one of my last resorts. It was after I got in all of the film festivals. Um, now, personally, I wasn't expecting anything back in return. I wasn't. I wasn't expect you in this. This industry is a dog eat dog world. You don't expect anything back in return. 
but I was at a point where I thought, what the hell, what do I have to lose? Send him a copy of the pilot. I did send him a copy of the pilot. It was met with absolute silence and I was completely ghosted after that. And I reached out a couple more times as a friend. We were supposed to be cool. And remember, like, take in, in mind, the reason I submit it to him is he introduces me to people as like, oh, she knows her shit. Like, she knows what she's doing. Like, she knows her shit. And so I thought, okay, well, like, he thinks highly of me. Like, I was on his show. I've always given credit where credit's due. I've always given credit to learning production aspects from him and learning from him on set and watching him in person and understanding how his mind works and applying those things. And I've always given, like, complete gratitude for being able to learn from him and my time with Pilgrim and other studios. But I was hoping, I guess, the only thing in return I really wanted was him to be like, that was, you know, I can't do anything about it, but like, congratulations, good job. You know, like, I was a part of, my journey was with him. It started with him. And, and I just wanted, maybe, maybe thinking he could give it to somebody he knows at the network if he wasn't interested. Like, I don't know. I was not expecting to be met with silence, and I was not expected to be ghosted after that. And it's been that way since. And it's shocking. It was shocking. It was shocking. It and was. we know he we know he got it because we saw it was red. Yeah. So it wasn't one of those things where it's like, oh, maybe he just didn't check or whatever. No, it, like, it, it was like as soon it was sent. As soon as it was sent. Yeah. So. And, and I don't know what's going on in his personal life. Once again, I don't expect him. I wasn't expecting to get signed. I was not expecting that. I, was, I think I was more expecting on a friend level a congratulations or like good job or like I'm proud of you or you know some like little it didn't really need to be like I need a contract and instead it was just nothing and then now like no contact no communication whatsoever so then it's like is is everybody threatened by me is everybody threatened by me because I I really do like I've known Zach and I, I feel like he's the kind of person like this is shit like you did a shit job and then instead it was just silence and ghosted but yet he's taking all of my ideas and turning them into his own series on Travel Channel and, and it's just strange like I feel like I'm in a strange position I feel like I'm looking everything from the outside like what the hell is going on yeah it's very very out of body experience I feel like you know when the pilot was done and we were in the process of like submitting it to X amount of people and everywhere we could, you know, we figured that just adding Zach to the mix would be great, you know, and then just continue on with our options. It's not like we were riding on him. Or no, like I that. wasn't. I was but not. From a professional standpoint, to even just not hear anything was just kind of base, in my opinion, from an outside opinion. And um, it's just disappointing. It's really disappointing. Because there was a lot of hard work that was put into that, and he knows that. And he's watched Crystal put in the work for what she does to the point where he literally vouches for her, like, and everything. So I'm not too sure. I'm not too sure what it is. I, I have no idea what it is when it comes to women in the industry. And I actually find it really interesting too, because if you notice in Paranormal specifically, especially on Travel Channel. There are, like, there's no... I don't think I've ever seen a show where there's been more than one woman in a crew. Never. And I, I think there's even a when Even when Chris Williams and Amy Bruni were in, in Ghost Hunters, they never were together. They were always separate. And, yeah. like, even and when I, I was with Pilgrim, like, on set and, like, listening, learning, like, from the producers, production companies, they didn't want them to work together. They would keep them as separated as possible. Yeah, and I think that there's a reason for that from the production company's standpoint. I think that they think that we aren't as smart as we are. Exactly. And I think that they think there's strength in numbers. Mm -hmm. And that when a bunch of strong, successful women in paranormal say, you know what, we're ready for this change, which is exactly what Crystal's doing on her own, by the way, um, you know, that's threatening to them. That's demasculinizing for some reason, that they can't rein us in and... You know, it's just not acceptable. And and we're in 2021 now, okay? Like, I think we need to just start being more progressive and moving forward with these things and allowing opportunities with people that have worked hard for them. Mm -hmm. um, so it's just, it's so frustrating. It's so frustrating, but it's going to continue on. It's it going to continue on. Nothing's stopping. We're going to keep going. And 
And I do have That's my bad days. Do. I have my bad days. And Kat picks me up. She knows how to pick me up, you know. I have my days where I'll have negotiations going on and I'm like so excited. I'm like, this is good. This is good. Now, I've never been like, this is it. This is totally it. Now, this last one, there was one recently that I thought was going to be it. Like I was I was convinced I was done finally and it fell through again. Um, mm-hmm. I ha- I'm human. I have my days where I'm tired, you know, like... The thought, you know, the reason I'm going to submit or I'm going to put the pilot on YouTube is because um, I've ran it into the ground as far as I can. You can only try to attempt to sell a pilot um, in the like first year that it's done. And now we're going on two years old and I can't sell it now. Obvi- and I also can't sell it because Chanel is in it um, because she's no longer with us, as you guys know. So I'm going to release the pilot for that reason. But the thought of having to go back out and shoot another pilot is just exhausting. It's exhausting because I've done it. I've done it a few times. I've done it over and over again. And and the problem is, is it's not like I'm not getting the, – the problem would be is if I was shooting pilots and I wasn't getting negotiations. Like that would be a problem because like there's a lot of filmmakers out there that will, will do documentaries, do scripted films, and they won't get shit for negotiations, nothing. So I'm not like sitting here trying to be ungrateful. I'm very grateful. Obviously, I'm – extremely versed at this point in negotiations because I've done so many of them but um none of them lead to be where it needs to go and it's because I think having a female crew having me where you can't push me around knowing what I want like there's it, you know there's there's a difference between like oh Crystal we can only give you five hundred thousand dollars to shoot not a million so that's fine like you work it out but it, that's not even the negotiations. That's a normal negotiation. Like if there was a male that was running this, they would be like, okay, we can give you 800000 not the million you're asking for. And instead we're going to do 10 episodes instead of 12. That's a negotiation rather than the million I'm asking for in the 12 episodes. What I'm getting is, no, we just want control. Period. Yeah. And, and all the, you know, from what I've been noticing just from the outside, it seems that these, if these production companies are going to involve women in the process it's with women that have no idea what they're doing Mm -hmm. women that don't know about the industry that will just sign their name on the dotted lines because they know what to say and that's just sad it's wrong of them to be doing that because you know any women that's getting involved in this type of industry you know has some form of experience maybe not in film Mm -hmm. um so for to just see them be used in abuse like that is just it's just disgusting it's Mm -hmm. disgusting Mm -hmm. it's sad you know sometimes I have hard days where I tell Kat like am I just ahead of my time am I too ahead of my time where like you know 2021 this isn't it you know guys like I went I was on paranormal challenge in 2011 started YouTube 2013 this has been an ongoing battle for 10 years this year this has been a long battle and it's not over yet. And, and, you know, I'm getting older, you know, like there's some days where I'm like, should I just quit and like find a spouse and have kids and like start my life? Like I've been chasing this dragon for 10 years. Like most people would be like, damn, bitch, I would have gave up a long time ago, you know, but there's, there's another side of me too. That's like, I know there's more to this. Like I know that I could be, if, if it's taken me this long to go to get to this point, I can't imagine somebody else starting now. It's going to take them just as long or longer, you know? Like, holy crap. Like, I'm trying to, like, create something, be a trailblazer for future generations of girls in paranormal. And and being a woman and being taken, that's what, that's, I'm going to start getting emotional. That's um, something that Dave Schrader said to me is uh and it replays in my mind sometimes when i'm having bad days which is crystal nobody's gonna take you serious because of the way you look you're too girly like the only kind of girls they want in paranormal is girl next door or like the girls with the t-shirt jeans and the hoodie you know who says i can't crawl on in a crawl space and platforms i can, i've done it before cat's seen it i've called i've crawled uh, yeah. in an attic with platforms like i can't why why i, I wear my doc martens i'm not gonna wear heels up a lot i'm not stupid just because I'm a female, I'm not dumb, you know, like, but it's like that replays in my head. Like Dave Schrader said that, like, no one's going to ever take you serious as a paranormal investigator because of the way you look. And when I have my bad days, that fucking voice just replays in my head. 
and it sucks it sucks because I have my bad days and the other day I had a bad day and it was because I was just mourning the fact that it just shouldn't have, it shouldn't be taking this long it shouldn't be taking this long people are frustrated because they're like why aren't you getting the series signed dude I'm trying like I've had so many negotiations like I'm trying ask Kat she's seen it she's bear witness she's been in on negotiations with me I had to send her in on a a conference call for me one day with a group of producers and she's never done it before and she's like I'm gonna do it I, I had something I think it was my mom was in the hospital yeah and Kat had yeah. to do it for me and like Kat went in there and she freaking did it but you know that's the other thing you get people that are like oh my god you guys know about film and paranormal because you think about it a lot of people are either filmmakers or paranormal investigators the two don't mesh to together and when we talk yeah. about, oh, no, we know about film, we know about pre-production, production, post-production, production, post oh, and we also understand the scientific side of electromagnetic fields and everything that's involved with, you know, creating plasma and energy, they're like, whoa, 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 we're intimidated, you're girls, you're blonde, you, you know, where are the blonde jokes starting? I've had producers that will just start throwing blonde jokes at me, and I'm sitting there like, where did that come from? I wasn't even, I'm, I'm talking, I think I'm eloquent with my words. I'm talking yeah. about signing a series, I'm talking about a production, and you're throwing blonde jokes at me? I think I definitely don't fit the stigma of a blonde joke whatsoever. No. No. No, because they just want to sit there and they want to, you know, put women down. Still. It, we're a joke to people. We're a joke to people. No I didn't, I just, I joke. didn't know it was going to go this way. I really didn't. I swear I didn't. Yeah. I swear. Because, like, and it's, when I quit Pilgrim, it's, it was when I was... I told you, I've, I've talked about this story, is the very last day I was taken in a room full of men in suits. It was all men. And it was like 15 men sitting at this oval table in this conference room. And um, I was saying I was wanting to quit the series. And this was before Killer Contact was being shot. I was literally getting ready to leave for England the following day. And I had this gut feeling to not do it because Killer Contact turned out to be such a joke. And I went in, I called my, my EP and I was like, I have to quit. I need to, I need to cancel my, I need to cancel my contract. I can't do this. So he had my assistant drive me back to the studio and it was in a room full of 18, 25 men wearing suits, millionaires. And they all sat around mocking me, making fun of me saying, you're not going to be anybody. If you don't take this opportunity, you're just going to end up back in the kitchen like every other woman does. And I was just, I didn't know that was going to be the very first start of a very long journey that I was going to be on. I didn't know. I had no idea. Even when I started YouTube, didn't even know YouTube was going to do, do anything. I didn't know people were going to love my reviews. I had no idea. I didn't know what the hell I was doing when I first started YouTube. I just knew I was going to do it. And then, you know, I start getting these offers in from production companies and it just kept winding back to that same conversation of just women belong in the kitchen. And I'm like, damn, is this 2019 or is this 1944? Because damn, my, my grandma grew up in the depression and she doesn't even talk like this. You know, like, are we still that far back? It's hor it, it, it just kind of makes me nauseous, not gonna lie. Like every time it's it's, mentioned or you know it happens misogyny is just makes me want to bomb it makes me want to bomb but i can't believe i'm taking on that narrative yeah because like although i was raised by a very strong single mom i never thought i was going to be taking on that narrative like feminism and against misogyny because i never really had to deal with it that much in my life like even in my book i talk about my my godfather is the one that stepped in as my father and raised me. And he was like the manliest dude you'd ever meet. He was in the army. He was buff. He was huge. He was like 6'4". He worked on cars. He taught me how to work on cars. He was from the military. So he was like into all the gruff guy stuff. He had this huge beard. He wore a bandana. Like he's so dude-ish. But he was like, don't ever think, let society teach you you can't be equal to me just because I look differently than you. And so I just grew up thinking that. And so then when I am, I'm hit with all of these barriers and like blockades of having the same problem over and over again, I cannot believe I'm living this narrative, honestly, because I was not expecting it to. Like I, I was, I was never, I'm still not really a hardcore feminist. I just want equality. I'm not going to go around totally preaching about it because it just, it is, you should be right. equal. But right. then when you're, like, hitting all these brick walls with, like, st I'm being stopped with progressing and, like, being what I want to be, 
even though I have more than enough to offer everyone, which is a pilot and an entire YouTube channel, I'm still being thrown under the bus because I have a vagina? Yeah. That's why? Because of my girly parts? Mm -hmm. Seriously? And like, your, And the makeup and your hair, and they're just going to pick you apart. What if a blonde guy walked into a room... You know what I mean? Like, like what? It oh, shouldn't I, matter. Well, I mean, it, it just, it all goes back to the narrative of I look like a porn star and no one's going to take you serious in your genre. So pick something else. I've well, actually had I mean, producers be like, oh, I can get you into acting. I can put, I can get you, like, you're gorgeous, Crystal. We'll get you on as, as a, an extra or even like, we'll, we'll get you um, casting in with movies. Like, I have a spot for you. Like, we can get you in movies right now. And I'm like, but I don't, I don't want to be an actor. You would think that being a paranormal investigator would be easier because I don't, I'm not in acting school. You know what I mean? Like, they're like, no, you can't do that. People aren't going to take, take you serious. It's, it's a masculine world, and you're too girly for it. And you're a porn star. I'm so sick of being told I look like a porn star. My God. My God, I'm so over that. Oh, my God, I'm so over that. Like, you can't, I, I, my eyes, like, if I roll them back one more time, I'll see my brain. You're going to get stuck. Literally, it's just, it's crazy to me. And, and what's even crazier is the success of, you know, having these negotiations. And, you know, it is worthy of being signed. But it's just the same freaking narrative every time. Well, and like Kat even said, maybe you should propose a question. And, and I do. And I was, I was invited on um, the set for Ghost Adventures Cecil Hotel. I was called by some of the producers that work at Travel Channel. I mentioned it briefly in my new Cecil review video, but only briefly. And basically the producers saw my video and they wanted me to um, come in and like help with like data fact checking because I had so many facts in that video that I was like spurting off because I'm a researcher, right? Like I'm an investigator. That's part of the job is like you have to do your work. Like you, you can't you have to be spouting out the truth. And um, I declined it immediately. I didn't know at the time it was for Ghost Adventures. But then the producer starts getting involved with me and she's like, oh my God, like I've watched your show, I've watched your series and it's just like, dang, I think we wanna sign you. I think we wanna sign you to Travel Channel. I can't tell you how many producers I've had come to me from Travel Channel claiming they wanna sign me. And then they end up attempting to get information out of me like how I how I shoot, what my my goal, what my agenda is with the series, and I'm always like sign an NDA first, and then we'll chat, and then they ghost me again. They ghost mm -hmm. me because I know how to do things the right way. Yeah. Sign an NDA, and then I'll show you the pilot. Sign an NDA. I'll give you the trailer. I'll give you the information that you want. And um, they've taken a lot of information from Crystal. Obviously. From meetings. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I would say there's a lot of proof of that. They've copied a lot. Yeah. A lot. Yeah. For a while, every time I would post a video, the following few weeks, you'd see a new episode somewhere of a video that I'd just done of random locations that are haunted out of nowhere, and then suddenly they're going there to investigate whoever, not necessarily ghost adventures. So, yeah, that's it. You know, I just kind of wanted to share it. And I mean, the last question is, you know, if I have everything that they supposedly say they want or, and more, which is a pilot, um, I have an executive summary. I have uh, an extremely detailed budget. Ask Kat. She's helped me add it up. You know, it's no, <laughs> it's no small, you know, to-do list wow. to, to add a million dollar budget, guys. Like, that's not a small task. To, to add something that adds up to a million dollars. I have uh, trailers, I have sizzle reels, I have everything on a platter, including a YouTube channel, millions of views, fan base. What more can I give you? What else do you want? I can't change I myself no. from being a girl. You know what I mean? Like if that's how it comes out, I can't. I, I don't even think there is any, there is nothing else to give them. I would be curious if a question would ever be thrown at them at some point and being like, oh, I don't understand, like, what more do you need from me? Mm -hmm. And if they would be able to answer. One, one thing I want to see stop 
is I don't want to hear anybody else ask me to submit my pilot to Zach. Because people have been saying I should do that for years, and I didn't out of respect of our friendship, and then I did, and then the friendship ended. So please don't ask me about it anymore. I have no answers. I don't know what's going on in his personal life. I don't care what's going on in his personal life. I don't know what caused it, what didn't cause it. I don't know why the communication stopped. I just, that was another reason why I wanted to stop doing Ghost Adventures reviews was because I think I've given him enough press and having a friendship goes two ways. And um, you can't force someone to be, be your friend, which never, I never wanted that. I've always cheered him on and I just sort of expected it back in return because I feel like friendships should be equal. Mm -hmm. So if that friendship ever does get rekindled, um, it'll have to be on his side reopening that door. It won't be coming from my side. And um, if it does, it does. And if it doesn't, it doesn't. I'm not hurt either way. I just know that I have a job that I need to keep trying to do. and. I, you know, I'm going to keep trying. I don't know if and when I'll, I'll give up. You know, Kat and I are actually discussing, we're throwing around pre-production ideas right now. And um, she's wanting to come out and shoot another pilot, except with pretty much just the two of us. Um, I'd love Elfie to be involved, but we haven't even presented her with that idea yet. Um, Location-wise, it would have to be somewhere sort of close and... and doing another pilot you know cameras change like we need new cameras now we've done it in a couple years now we need new cameras and we're wanting to do black magic cameras and that's going to be two thousand three thousand dollars for each camera i'm going to need at least two of them so that's another six thousand dollar budget i'm going to have to come up with like people don't realize like you can't just go shoot a pilot like you don't just get up and walk out to shoot a pilot It, it you there's planning there's um contracts involved with the location uh, equipment that needs to be purchased, prepping that needs to be done. So yes, we're in the very early stages of throwing around another, um, shooting another pilot idea, but nothing's in stone yet. And, um, it's a road and I know it's about the journey, not the destination, but I cannot lie and say that I'm not getting tired. I'm tired of the same effing narrative over and over again of Crystal, just go be a porn star. Crystal, just give up. Nobody's going to take you serious. Yes, we're going to sign you and then last minute be like, well, we'll only sign you if you relinquish, you know, a majority of the production company slash power and control over to us. And I'm just like, man, I hope I'm not ahead of my time. I hope I'm not. Yeah. You know? It is. It's a lot to undertake and, you know, it's, even when it seems like there's walls right now, energetically, they are also being broken through. Mm-hmm. You know, but that's hard to think like that in the midst of feeling like, will this ever end? Well, pod- I mean, stop? where the podcast is going great. You know, I can't yeah. complain about that. The YouTube channel's up and running. Great. Good. That's great news. But like shooting and editing another pilot, guys, P.S., People are mad at me for not disclosing the um, Cecil, Cecil, whatever, um, documentary on Netflix and comparing it to Ghost Adventures. That's a different review, guys. Come on. You know, like, people have these expectations out of me. that They want to see all these reviews. They want to see this. They want to see that. And I'm like, there's one of me right now. Like, there's a crew of three of us currently. It's Kat, me, and Elfie. And I do 90% of it. And so, you know, the thought of shooting another pilot and why aren't you signed? It's just not that easy. I get those questions every day on social media. Why aren't you signed? Why aren't you signed? So anyway, I think that's all the, that's, I just, it's being honest. I'm not trying to be negative or dark. I just feel like it's, it's time to educate you guys on the true side of the struggles that we've encountered for a really long time. And I am blessed that I'm not in it alone now that I do have Kat here to support me but she's been like damn I didn't realize how hard this was it's an ugly world I'm just saying I'm glad I'm not in that room with her when she's negotiating because my Aries would be like excuse me sir I think you need to take a seat boo all right and let me tell you what's gonna happen okay it's fine it's fine oh so just annoying so frustrating so frustrating 
Yeah, the, the porn star thing's not going to work out. That's all I'm going to say. <laughs> oh my gosh. Why, just, why am I laughing? It's not yeah, funny. It's just not going to happen. It's not funny. Sorry. Ugh. Um Gosh. Maybe when it was like maybe 10 years ago, you know, like I feel like. No, I'm just kidding. Stop. Oh, no. Gosh, I can't. All right, let's let's smooth into black eyed kids really quick and get on a paranormal okay. talk for a few. So the black eyed children thing, you like went down a super dark rabbit hole with this. Yep. And I mean I I think do you first of all, do you think they're real? I do. Do you? So I, there's a few different ways that people talk about black eyed kids. So essentially there's some, some black eyed children stories that say you're sitting in your car at night eating Wendy's leftovers or whatever, and you're in the car and someone comes and knocks on your window and it's a kid with a hoodie with complete dark eyes. And they're asking you to get in the car, unlock your car. And essentially the, the legend goes that they cannot enter unless you give them permission. Okay. Now that I was kind of like, nah, you know, like, mm, but then there's been some other cases where people have claimed that they've had, um, their door has been knocked on. It's children. The children have very dark eyes where there's no like white parts distinct. And the children say, my parents are coming to pick me up. Can we just come in till they get here? And the people let them in. And what ends up happening is these, um, adults that let them in end up getting sort of sick with like a radiation poisoning and they end up getting um like weird different types of cancers which i find really interesting so that would be related to like ufo paranormal uh alien phenomena right so if they're if they're there's high levels of radiation around them which is said it's found at ufo sites there's high levels of radiation so I find that really... So th- when I started hearing those stories, I was like, okay, this is kind of compelling. This I could believe more than like just a random kid knocking on your car door. Um, yeah. And then the other one is there was this really compelling video that came out of the UK. And this guy basically had bought... It's on YouTube if you guys want to find it. I don't know. I don't have the link. You'll have If you Google it, you'll find it. But essentially, it's this guy in the UK, he's, um, he, he purchased a drone, he wanted to take his drone out to fly, like, randomly, and he took his drone around this, like, haunted um, forest that's in the UK, and as he dips down, he actually ends up seeing, like, this little girl in a white nightgown emerge from um, the trees. She's not looking at the drone, but she has dark black eyes like there's no whites and why is there a little girl in like an 1800s dress walking through the forest by herself in the middle of nowhere there's like seemingly nobody around so he that area that forest is known for having black eyed children um prominent and like people have had like encounters with them so that was another one that i found really interesting so what do you think about a cat I I found it interesting when they were talking about some of the um, like features of these black eyed children as well Mm -hmm. because one of them was reported to have had like talon like feet. Oh, I didn't see that. So I think of like talons as like three toes, right? Like three whatever, and then I think of like alien feet. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Like like little like ET feet or something like that. I'm like, ooh, how cute! I think that's cute. It is kind of. Okay, I'm not crazy for feeling that. I, I loved like, E.T. Know, oh, my God. Little alien feet. Yes. Just, you know, it's cute. But, yeah, there was this um, one encounter that happened in Texas. Mm-hmm. And um, this guy named, i um, trying to find him here, Brian Bethel. He was actually on an episode of Monsters and Mysteries. Mm-hmm. And um, he talks about his experience in his car. Mm-hmm. So he had one of the car situations where he had, like, two kids that were um, outside of the car in like hoodies, but he could see that their eyes were completely black. Mm -hmm. And um, they kept telling him like, we're not gonna hurt you, we're not gonna hurt you type Mm -hmm. of scenario. And then like they disappeared. You just need to let me in the car. And like, so, and by the way, these black eyed children don't usually hurt people. Like there's stories, like they don't hurt people, they don't harm you. But I, it must be some sort of like a universal law of like, you can't enter unless you, you get permission. And I think the reason that is, is maybe they do know that there's high radiation frequency coming off of them. So, you know, that which could hurt or harm humans as we know it. That's just like, um, you know, you, you learn like x-ray techs. 
and people who, who work in like the x-ray department, they have to be really careful. And when they take x-rays, they have to remove themselves from the room because if they have too much contact with radiation, it can end up harming you like really badly. Um, yeah. So it's just, I, that I do find really interesting. I really do. But um, some people, I hate to say it, but it, the stories go, it seems to be older people that end up letting them in. So it seems like yeah. maybe like senior citizens or like adults, like older adults end up being like feeling bad, like this little kid standing out in the cold and he's asking to come in. And like they just, they literally stay, stay inside. Now some have said that when they leave, they walk out the door and they'll see like this huge like white flash of a light, which to us could be a spaceship, UFO, whatever. Yeah. Um, but they never actually see how they leave. And some sometimes people will actually... Um, like black out when the child like the child says well my parents are here i'm leaving and they'll literally like black out so once again it makes you wonder if it, is it the et phenomena is it the is it the men in black phenomena thing where yeah. you, where you're like flashed and you like forget what you're doing or you know what i mean like whatever till you wake up later and that's another really interesting thing too because there was another incident that happened with elderly an elderly couple and this they let them in to the house and as soon as they let them in the elderly man started to have a bloody nose yes yeah and like really weird like things started happening around the house and all of that and then um when the kids said that our parents were here it was claimed it was reported that when the kids left the house they opened the door but like didn't touch it and the door um was left open and as they were walking out they saw that they were walking towards two very tall and slender men mm -hmm. like men and i immediately thought oh my god men in black mm -hmm. which so, that that's a negotiation too some people say men in black are just ufo officials that are like on cases of aliens other people say the men in black are aliens um so, I, I think they are i mean i don't know man I mean, I'm not saying it doesn't exist. I think anything could exist at this point. You know what I mean? Like, but it's just, it does, it, it is an, an uneasy thing. And it always says that when these these people have these encounters where, like, they knock on the door or knock on the um, car door, is that they're feeling an overwhelming sense of dread. I think that is just um, high levels of electromagnetic fields. Yeah. I don't think it's necessarily them doing anything harm. I mean, I'm not saying, I mean, I'm sure, I mean, there's good humans and bad humans. So I assume there's the same thing with aliens. There's good aliens and bad aliens. You know what I mean? But um, with high electromagnetic fields, like think about it when we're in um, haunted locations, Kat, and like you feel, you, you know, you feel it like in the energy change, like you know when the electromagnetic fields are high, yep. like it changes you. Cat <laughs> leaves, she's like, bye, I'm leaving. <laughs> She'll turn around and walk out. <laughs> hey, <Jerko in. laughs> um, the blackened out eyes, so do you think that they almost have like, they're like wearing like an alien skin or something weird to like, or like a human skin? Or like to, like human skin? Yeah. yeah. I think they are. And, and I think that they do walk among, among us. Like I'm not saying black eyed kids just just them but i do think that they live among us oh in, i mean like human form because right. they think we're gonna like panic if we see them in their true form i mean know? after 2020 i don't think anything's panicable at this point you know what i mean like that's pandemic true. that's like you know the government released the aliens and ufos exist and everyone was like yeah whatever we're in a pandemic yeah, we're like we knew we don't care uh, well, what is that guy? um stephen greer we have, yes. to, I have to look back and see when he predicted or or, or was told when the um, the gosh, fake alien invasion. Fine. Yes, when the alien invasion was gonna happen. He did a podcast on it like a week or two ago. Oh, that's weird. And he's saying that the the fake alien invasion is coming, is what he said. Hmm. So that I don't know. I mean, there's I, it's interesting. It is. It is. It's all interesting. You just never know what's gonna happen. Um, some people think that they're demons, um, and it's like the devil himself. I don't think so. No, no. Honestly, like, I've encountered, like, demonic activity, like, real demonic activity, and in my opinion, demons are way too lazy to put out that much effort. Like, they're not gonna put on a human suit. That's an alien thing. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. if a demon wants to possess you, boo, it's just gonna happen. Like, they're gonna figure out a way. <laughs> like, they're not gonna <laughs> waste the time to go get a human suit. Like, I don't have time for this. You know what I mean? I'm wondering 
because I found it interesting too that the the black eyed children were all, were also reported to be seen in the midst of um, sleep paralysis. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I haven't experienced that before. I've experienced you have or- I've experienced the Hat Man and Shadow People. Ooh. But I've Ooh. never experienced black eyed children. That would freak me out. Nope. Mm-mm. No. <laughs> Y'all can come out the window. You came in. I've been saging my house every four to five days because I had a really bad uh, sleep paralysis moment a couple months ago. And I'm so scared yeah. it's going to happen again. <laughs> Honestly, like, I just don't want... Every night I'm like... Was that with the mark? St. Michael, please just come in and hang out in my room all night. Don't <laughs> leave. St. Michael, just say the whole time. <laughs> I need to sleep. Clearly. No, that was the night. I think I told you I was I was asleep, and I thought I woke up, and I sat up in my bed, and I looked down and realized I was still laying down, and I was like, "Oh shit, I'm having sleep paralysis!" Like straight up, which I don't get very often, by the way. Like it doesn't happen like constantly, you know. And like a lot of people, it happens all the time. Those poor mofo's because I would die. But um, I I woke up, I I was like shit, and it, the only way I can describe it is it looked black and white like static, like you know static TV when it looks black and white. Oh, the good old days. The energy around me looked static, like the the whole room, and I was like shit, I'm in the shadow realm, <laughs> like straight up. And I was like, okay, and like when it first happens, you kind of panic because you're like, what am I gonna do? You know what I mean? Like. <laughs> Because you want, oh, you want to go back to your body, but it's just not that easy. And all of a sudden, I saw this, like, door open, like, a portal open in the corner of my bedroom. Nope. And I was like, oh, shit. Like, I know what's going to happen next. Like, I was, like, literally knew it. And then this shadow person came out walking very calmly out of the portal, walked up to me on the bed, crawled on top of me, and it was not on my spirit it was on my body and it was like scratching to like try to open up my chest like like Ugh. like ferociously scratching me trying to like cut me open and that's when i was like okay saint michael this would be a good time to come in and help me out come in and help. <laughs> It's fine. I was like, gonna rave right I was now. like spirit guides anytime and so i knew within minutes when i said that that my I because my guides are good like they're they're cool like they're sick of my shit but they're cool, and ah, within seconds dude. I was back in my body and I was like okay we're gonna get up and sage, and we're just gonna make sure this doesn't happen again you know what I mean? Holy crap! So yeah that was rough. So if if that would have been a black eyed child I I don't know what I would have done with my life. <laughs> I would have like thrown my pillow at them. That would be my first response. Cat, you can't. <laughs> You're not in your body. <laughs> Well, but some haven't seen them in sleep paralysis. Oh, You know, okay. like, yeah. if they just, like, come up to the door or whatever, I'm just going to throw whatever I can at them. Get the F out. Well, here's a, good, mm. here's a good witchcraft tip, and it's for even people that don't really practice witchcraft. What you need to do is if you have an apartment or a home or whatever, like, a ho- like, I have a house, you need to name your house something nobody knows. Like, name... Name it something nobody knows. Don't ever tell the name of it because then people can't, like, send black magic or bad spells to you because your house is protected by the name that you gave it. Magic tip. Magic Mm -hmm. tips 101. So, yeah, I don't think it was anything sent to me. I think sometimes I have those um, things happen because I think I'm supposed to experience them to be able to relate it to you guys. So you're welcome for me being the guinea pig, okay? Okay. No, you don't want shadow people in your house. Looking for you. <laughs> Literally. Um, but yeah, back to... It is interesting, though, that even when I was researching it, a lot of um, black-eyed uh, black-eyed children are seen in Texas. What's with Texas, man? Yeah, poor Texas, by the way. Really poor Texas. They general. have the, the snowmageddon. They have black-eyed kids. They have all kinds of issues. They have... A lot of issues. Like, I feel so bad. All kind of issues. I I almost went off on a tangent and I shut myself up. I I knew exactly what (laughs) you were going to talk about. So don't don't even worry about it. I didn't say it. I shut up. Yep. I almost put my foot in my mouth. Um, (laughs) Nothing against Texas, by the way, because Kat's family is in Texas. We have no problems with Texas, whatever. Mm -hmm. Um, But um, 
so basically if you if they if you say no you can't come in they will go away eventually if you yeah. if you don't a lot of people won't respond and they'll just stand outside your house and beat the door why don't you respond then and say no go away you know what i mean like or like pray right. to jesus or somebody i don't know say so, hey, michael go answer the door <laughs> I, uh, St. Michael, I'm going to need you to take care of this, okay? Um, Gosh. Have you ever, do you do you think you've ever had an alien encounter? Have I what? Oh, you I, cut out. That was creepy. Great. That's fantastic. What did you say? I said, do you think you've ever had an alien encounter? Yeah. When? I think you know when. Oh, that's right. We both did. I forgot that about that. That was freaky. That was, was that your... Yes. Was that the only Wait. one? Yeah. Yeah, I mean, other than seeing things. Like, I saw UFOs a lot. Right. But not, like, actual alien, like, encounter. So, what do you... Okay, so Kat and I met an alien on set. <laughs> <laughs> um, she was the owner of the loca- the haunted location that we went to. I didn't know she was an alien until we got there. Um... What look like one. what is what is the distinctual difference when you meet an, when one meets an alien? Like, how are you so sure she was an alien? That's a tough question because I don't want to come across like insensitive. <laughs> like, you know, Cat, she was an alien. Describing. She but was. She like had a huge cranium. Okay, it was huge. <laughs> but 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 her features were really small. <coughs> right. And and her eyesight. Or whatever it was, his eyesight mm-hmm. was very much like I'm watching you. Mm-hmm. It was not normal. <laughs> it's just not, not even for an awkward person. Mm-hmm. You know, like there was just something wrong. There mm-hmm. was something wrong there, and it was just even creepier what what she was wearing. So that was that was really creepy too. Yeah, I feel like she she was planning for us to be there. Is what I feel. Yeah, like. it, uh, yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> It was very creepy. Yeah. Um, the energy is very much like... Her mannerisms. Okay. Yes. <laughs> you you tell that one. You tell that one because that was creepy. And the suit... Well, I just want to first of all let everyone know that I was born with the gift of gab. And I can uh, be friends with anyone, including an alien, by the way. And I poke her face through that shit. Like, she had no idea I was freaked out by her. Um, and I talked to her the whole... I talked to her, and I was engaging in conversation with her. Um, but, yeah, she she um, she wasn't human. She didn't look at you when she spoke. She, she turned completely around. And it was almost like she forgot... She would have moments where she would try to human again, and she would forget, and then she'd... So, however they communicate is differently, and uh, it's weird because even Chanel, the first thing we were all like, oh, she's not human, okay. <laughs> like, and we, we didn't even communicate. Like, she left She left when we were filming. She was not going to film with us on set, and the minute she left, we were all like, yeah, that was an alien. <laughs> and Who would she look at? She refused to look at somebody. Chanel. It was Chanel. She absolutely did not like... Well, Chanel had dark energy anyways. And she was proud of it, you know? So Chanel was a little edgy and dark, but she was... Yeah. She did not want anything to do with Chanel. She was, like, scared of Chanel. And she liked Kat a lot. And she was wearing a hoodie from Kat's college or something, right? No, she was wearing a Salisbury Beach sweatshirt, which I'm sorry, in the middle of nowhere where we were was just very random because there's only one beach in in New Hampshire. It's Massachusetts or New Hampshire, but it's in the New England area where you can get Salisbury Beach sweatshirts. Mm-hmm. And I had a little bit of an out of body experience and yeah, she really liked me a lot and I just I my face was just like this is like crazy. <laughs> like I tried so hard to just be nice cuz usually I can also just like oh it's fine, but there was something off. There was well, some off she's of the, not in the human. soup. Yeah, this. She would not stop talking about the soup. Yeah, she. Well, that that's an alien thing. You don't have really respect for like animal life or human life. She was talking about she killed her rooster and she was gonna make rooster soup or something, but the way she was talking about it was very strange. And like, and I mean, let me tell you guys, like my 
my family, I've talked about this, my uncles are from Oklahoma in the south and they're farmers. They're white farmers and they, they do harvest their own chickens and cows and slaughter. And like, so I, I've heard that kind of communication where you're like, oh, God, go slaughterhouse, say, get myself another chicken. Like, I get that, but this was different. <laughs> this was not, this was like, hmm, interesting. Why am I laughing? It's so bad. And Crystal the whole time was like, okay, well, it's late. Cause it was like 11 o'clock. It was like 11 p.m. And this lady's just chilling, talking in the kitchen. <laughs> Like, by the way, don't even know where she came from, okay? Like, mm -mm. she just kind of appeared. So... Yeah, and, and the coyote thing happened. There was a lot of yeah, strange... Coyotes were but they also crazy. said they have UFO sightings all over that area where we filmed, too. So that'll be interesting. After, I'm going to release the pilot here in a couple of weeks, probably. And um, I have to do a couple edits. I also have to get with Kat because Kat's song is on the pilot, and it's called Black Roses on iTunes and Spotify. If you haven't downloaded it, go buy it right now. Black, Black Roses by Elms Landing. Um, but I have to get her approval in order to post the song so that I can get monetization on um, the pilot itself. So that's what that's the process. It just takes a minute. But um, after the pilot premieres for you guys on YouTube, then in a, a week or two after that, Kat and I will do another stream where we talk yeah. about behind the scenes stuff that you guys didn't see in the pilot and because I'm sure people have questions it's a really good pilot though it's good it's um, based on so Native good. American ground and miners so it's really good but um I mean I think that's all I've got for the night I mean black eyed kids do you Same think they're here. real yeah I think they're real don't you yeah I do I do they're very creepy though tell them to get the f out yeah I don't like the whole like banging on the door thing it's rude and why do you have to come in if you're waiting for a spaceship to pick you up? Why can't you know. just wait outside? Yeah, why they gotta be weird and be like spreading that nasty, you know? Yeah, don't bring your radiation in here, okay? Don't you know bring how that nasty you know radiation. how hard healthcare is to get in the United States? Don't bring your radiation in here. It's expensive. My God, why am I laughing? Because <laughs> it's true. So bad. It's so, true. I love some of the descriptions though of like when the kids would come and visit some of them were very story like and they're like oh the kids were on the couch and we made some hot cocoa for them and we got back they disappeared and i'm like why are you making hot cocoa for those creepy kids they got no eyes they got black eyes that's creepy i don't know i don't, you know, don't want hot cocoa they well i i feel like well if it's texas like te texas is known for being like southern very like homey like oh come on in y'all stay for a while and make you some cocoa you know that is it's very southern inviting where i'm from colorado I'm like bro i don't trust you man like you can just chill out on my lawn There's like i'll wrong. i'll open the garage you can go in the garage i won't be in there but go ahead and chill in the garage bro there's a heater in there if you need the space heater man you grab the space heater let me throw you out a coat throw a coat on the can't. Your Colorado's coming out. I love it. My Colorado's out. Oh, man. I love it. Oh, uh, Steph, Stefan Steffo said uh, they communicate telepathically, which is also Ooh. just obvious that they're aliens then. You know what I mean? Yep. <sighs> I'm just saying. Mm-mm. Mm-mm. Nah, they can go to Canada free health care. <laughs> <laughs> Why am go I laughing? Go to Canada. Black-eyed kids, funny. if you're watching this, you need to go to Canada, yeah. okay? Yeah. Yeah. If you get somebody sick you. with radiation poisoning, boo, like, they're in trouble. They're going to have to go fund me it. Like, it's a big problem. And oh, there's enough money having to be sent to Texas right now. Let them have the pandemic. And, and you know, we don't need anything else. Okay? We're, we, we have enough catastrophes right now. All right? Mm -mm. We mm -mm. need a break. We just need a break. Um, <laughs> next week, <laughs> I'll have Elfie. Elfie will be on doing... Uh, BTK chat and serial killer chat. So next week is going to be kind of more of a um, true crime chat, which is kind of fun. I don't usually do those because I know it's not um, super paranormal related. But as always, I'll sort of tie it into like paranormal locations so that people are always wondering like, where could a haunted thing be? There's a lot of things on TikTok um, where I've been, I'm getting ready to start like batching massive content. Kat and I both are. Uh, so make sure you're following both of us on TikTok and Ghost Girl Diaries on TikTok. We're going to start getting on there for GGD. But I'm sending myself videos of haunted stuff and I'm going to react to it on TikTok. But there's some kids that are breaking into places like idiots on TikTok 
to get like paranormal footage and like there's like home there's like dangerous shit happening i'm like then don't do that yeah please don't do that like it's just not safe you know but i I will tell you something i didn't want a tesla but now i want a tesla because the tesla cat i'm gonna get a tesla and i'm gonna write it off with the production company for us and we're gonna go ghost hunting with the damn tesla Oh, let's freaking do it. Because people are taking Teslas and they're driving in graveyards at night and they're seeing people walking in front of them on the, like, monitor. Yeah. I want a Tesla. Now Zach's going to go buy a Tesla because I said that. He's going to go buy a Tesla. Oh, you guys just watch. Be on the lookout. (laughs) There's another idea. If that's it, the mic is being thrown out the window. All right? Not even dropping it. I'm done with podcasts. It's going to explode. Okay. Just make some notes. get one, Zach. Get one for Crystal, too. All right? You know what? It's the least you could do. <laughs> oh, my God. I'm dead. Um, that's it. That's all I got. Yeah. yeah. Elon Musk. Yeah, he's moving to Texas, man. That poor man. Oh, my God. All these, like, gurus just moved to Texas, and now they're all stuck there in the blizzard. Oh, my God. They weren't the prepared. Well, there's people saving the sea turtles, but something makes me sick. One of the zoos wasn't prepared, and a bunch of the monkeys died, and the birds, the tropical birds and the monkeys, and I'm like, what the hell is wrong with y'all? Why weren't you prepared for this? Take the monkeys home. That's horrible. Oh, I hate that. It makes me want to throw up. The lizards were dying, and you you have Lily. I mean, don't... Lily! I don't know. No. Why would you open a zoo if you cannot care for the animals? That's a political talk, though. You know, let's just not get into it, because it could... <laughs> I could <laughs> rant. <laughs> Let's not rant. Okay, I'm going to get off my soapbox now. And uh, we will see you guys next week with Elfie. Make sure you guys are following us on social media for all alerts. Hopefully the next week's podcast should be fine, I'm assuming, as long as this contractor doesn't, like, blow me off for the 80th time. And um, uh, what Stephen said, I told Zach he needed to listen to Crystal one time. Oh, my God. I think he's I think he's listened to me a few times. Um yeah. He <laughs> listens too much. <laughs> oh. <Hi. laughs> um, thank you guys for being such amazing supporters all these years. I'm trying, and honest to God, let me just say one. Let me end this on one thing. What keeps getting me through this and keeps pushing me is all of the love and positive comments that are being left on YouTube. It, it really keeps pushing me, and it makes me realize. You guys want me to keep going, and I really appreciate you. And, and in the end, once once we get where we need to be, it's going to all be worth it. All the struggles are going to be worth it. And, you know, one of the biggest lessons in my book is always trust your intuition. And not only that, but um, take the positive and the lessons out of everything, which, which there has been a lot of lessons. Um, so I'm grateful for that. So thank you guys so much for tuning in. This will be uploaded as a podcast on Spotify. I have it um, in the in in the process of being approved for Pandora and a few others. It should be up hopefully in a few weeks. Um, make sure you guys subscribe. This will be up on YouTube. And as always, we will catch you guys next time. Bye, guys. Bye. Back from the dead.